Welcome to Specific Love. Today I'm going to show you how I built this awesome studio gaming desk for my son that not only holds his computer, but also his keyboard. That way he can mix and match music as he wishes and still play his games. Let's begin. A few months ago, my son's computer desk actually fell apart after several years of usage. It was a small structure and my son really needed a better setup for his room. So after several discussions, I decided to build a custom studio desk that would hold his computer and piano in one location. I first designed the desktop shape on the computer and then moved to the legs which are going to be made with iron pipes and fittings. Since iron pipe comes in preset sizes, it makes it a little harder to get an exact measurement for any design. That is, unless you mix and match several different lengths of pipe. So for this build, I had to use a combination of 12 inch, 24 inch, 4 inch, and 3 inch pipes to meet the requirements. I also used a variety of couplings, tees, and floor flanges to make this work. I also found that some of the fittings are manufactured in different dimensions and styles for the same size pipe. So if you plan to build this desk, it is best to double and triple check all of your sizes and lengths beforehand. When using iron pipe, a lot of times it comes with stickers and labels that are taped on. An easy way to help remove the labels is with a hair dryer or a heat gun. And then you remove any leftover pieces with some heavy duty tape. Also be aware that some of this pipe has an oil coating to prevent rust, which needs to be removed before building. For the back legs, I started with a floor flange to help give structure and balance at the base and then moved up with a 12 inch pipe and added a T connector. It was then followed by a 3 inch pipe, a second T connector, and then the final 12 inch pipe with a second floor flange. I used a T connector so it could have crossbars running to the front legs and across the back. This should give the desk plenty of strength and stability. I then built the front legs with the same basic idea except using a 4 inch pipe and a coupling to reach roughly the same height as the back legs. Now connecting the 24 inch pipes between the legs was a little challenging because I had to spin each of the legs around its axis making sure not to hit anything or anyone. And the final structure was rigid and strong, but it had enough twist so to adjust for any movement I needed to attach the top. To construct the top of the desk, I purchased a sheet of 3 quarter inch birch plywood. This should give plenty of strength to the desk and last a long time. A little tip when cutting plywood on the floor is to use some foam insulation as the base and also a great way to protect the wood and have a cutting surface. The desk will be 48 inches wide so I determined the depth, measured it out and used a straight edge which happened to be some wall trim. I clamped down the trim and used my circular saw for the first cut. I then moved it back to my shop and made a bunch of measurements determining the best location for all of the cuts. This would have been much more challenging if I had not designed it on the computer first. The angles in the back of the desk were easy enough to trim with my circular saw, but I had to carefully use a jigsaw to make the front side shapes. And this turned out to be a little more challenging than I expected, which needed a bunch of hand sanding to clean up some of the bad angles and rough edges. But in the long run, I was very happy with the outcome. I then grabbed the desktop for a quick test fit and everything lined up perfectly. Now some of the best studio type desks have the speakers raised to the height of the monitor so that the user can easily hear accurately what they are seeing on the screen. And to accomplish this, I decided to create a small shelf on both sides of the monitor to provide the best sound quality. So I cut another layer of plywood and started to draw out the shapes, but I discovered a small problem. Now I originally planned for this length here to here to be six inches, but looking at the thickness this way, it's just a, about a four and a quarter inches thick, which just isn't a lot of room for speakers. So I'm trying to make this a little bit bigger. So if I figure if I go at probably eight to nine inches, which should make this about six inches thick, which would be plenty enough room. So I made the needed adjustments and cut out the shelves with the jigsaw. I again sanded down all the sharp edges and any inconsistencies in the cut. For each of the shelves, I decided to use two legs consisting of four flanges and a four inch pipe. And now before moving to the staining and assembly, I wanted to apply some edge banding along the edges of the plywood to improve its appearance and consistency of stain. Now here's a great little tip. When you're applying your edge banding to your plywood, you need to have something to make sure it's on there fully, press it down hard. I don't have one of those rollers from the store, but I came up with a great idea to make one. This is just one of those four inch paint rollers. I have a few of these around the house, so these are nice and handy. And I've taken the main roller off. I happen to have an old wooden spool, and you don't have to have an actual spool. You can just anything around that can have a hole drilled through it. Put it on, put some tape or something to it here, and now, and there's a homemade roller so I can make sure the edge banding is fully adhered. 
Now this was the first time I had ever tried edge banding and I was quite surprised with the ease of assembly. Another little tip is to purchase a cheap basic iron at your local store so your spouse does not get mad if you happen to get glue or residue on the good one. After ironing on the banding, I simply used an edge band trimmer to remove any excess veneer from the sides. I then touched it up with some hand sanding. I then moved on to trimming out the tray for the piano. I needed it to be 16 inches deep, which happened to be the perfect size for me to make the final cuts on my table saw sled. And it was now time for the stain. So I took a piece of scrap wood and tried four different colors to see which one would be the easiest and work the best. And for our setup, we decided to spread on some mahogany color, followed by wiping the excess off with some paper towels. This gave us a deep brown color, but still allowed the grain to pop through, giving it an almost cherry type appearance. Now that I have veneer edges on everything, everything's nice and stained, looks really good, I have to install this tray up under the desk. Now in most situations, when you're installing a tray, you have the sides that the desk you know, have for support, and you just attach the bracket tree to those sides. Well obviously as you see here, there are no sides. So I'm going to have to use some specially drop down brackets so that it can hang from under the desk. Now these brackets only give about three, three and a half inch room between the bottom of this desk and the top of the tray. And I need almost six inches of total room so his keyboard can fit under here. So to do that, I'm going to try and pancake a few extra pieces of plywood together and about four of these or so under here and that way I can attach the bracketry to these and it should be long enough so that it can hang down and have plenty of clearance for the keyboard. So I took the plywood over to my table saw and cut out several more strips at four inches wide. I then glued them together, clamped them in place and set them to the side to dry. I next made four wooden circular pieces to attach to the bottom four flanges to help protect the carpet from any possible rust stains that could happen over time. And I simply used a large hole saw to cut these from the leftover scrap pieces. I stained the tops of them as well and then added a layer of edge banding around the sides for a better appearance. Moving back to the supports for the tray, there was a lot of glue squeeze out and I wanted to run them through my planer to reduce any inconsistency in the sides. And at this point, I decided to use only one of the supports by trimming it in half on the table saw. I then trimmed up all the edges and sanded them down by hand. To give a little extra strength to the plywood, I decided to add a few screws through a majority of the layers for added support. The wood glue would hold strong, but there is a chance that the layers of plywood could separate over time. I then added a layer of veneer around only three sides of the supports since the insides will not be seen. Next up was taking several measurements and cutting out the tray underneath the desk. I once again tested the spacing of the legs and the supports were a tad too long. Now I just realized that these supports, even though I've pretty much finished them, are actually about an inch too long. That stinks, but I'm going to have to trim them. Now I've never actually trimmed anything that had veneer edging already applied to it, so that's going to be a new experience for me. Let's see if we can do this. And the cuts turned out to be very easy. I again measured all the spacing and marked the locations of each support with a pencil so that I could go back and give it a light sanding. This was to make sure that the wood glue would adhere to both layers in case the stain had created an additional layer. I then added the glue and positioned it in place while adding a bunch of weight to the top of each side, making sure it pressed down firmly on the desktop. Now did anybody catch the mistake I did when I was installing these? Yeah, this should have been on the other side because the nice pretty veneer is on the inside and not the out. Well that's what I get for trying to rush through a project. Let's fix that. So I added the veneer to the outside edge which turned out to be much harder to do after it was installed. So make sure you do this process before you attach it to any other pieces. And then I added a touch of stain just like the other pieces. I next added the slides on the sides of the tray which required 6 screws for each side. I then started to test fit the shelves on top of the desk and realized it will be challenging to add the flanges with screws in this tight of an area. So I used a pencil to mark all of the holes and then drilled a pilot hole for each and then started a screw in each one. This allowed me to use a small screwdriver to insert each screw into each hole easily during assembly. At this point my wife added a layer of urethane to all of the top and side surfaces of the desk to prevent any damage from drinks or food in the future. The urethane really made all of the wood grain pop. And during that time I sprayed all of the piping with a layer of polyurethane to help prevent rust. After everything had dried, I screwed all the top components together and took everything to my son's room for final assembly. And the finished product looked amazing. The combination of wood and metal not only looked great, but went well with his current style of decoration. So I positioned his piano on the tray and my son grabbed his computer for a great looking combo. 
The best part of the desk is the fact that it can be placed flat against the wall or used in a corner. Now if you enjoyed this project and you want to see more behind the scenes of what we're doing on a daily basis, make sure you check out my Instagram page. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Otherwise, I have some videos right over here that go along with this project, so make sure you check those out. Have fun building!